Hi guys, this is Aaron Rope, and what we're going to do today is we're going to indicate a holder on our turret so that we can use our insert drill to start making some holes. So the tools I'll be using for this is going to be our, our mag base and a test indicator. So the first thing I'm going to do is kind of show you how I'm going to try and line this up. So if you'll notice right here, I have a couple shiny spots on the corners. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line that up with the bottom chamfer on the outside portion of my chuck. So if you look at your chuck, you'll see a small chamfer right here. I'm gonna line it up with that lower area, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get it lined up right of there and try and make sure that both corners are touching the bottom of that chamfer. That's gonna help me with my alignment. So what I'll do is I'll get it right where I think it's close and I'm gonna turn it on. So when I let go of this, of course, gravity's gonna take effect and it's gonna fall right down. So, the goal now is to get this stem right here and this stem right here stacked up so it'll look like it's turning on center. So to do that, I'm going to loosen this and I'm going to raise it up. So with this hanging down, I'm just going to kind of like stacking blocks is what I'm going to do. It's where it's stacking up vertically. Once that's close, I'll lock that into place. And the same thing with my indicator. I'm going to lock in my indicator to where it's really close to being on center. Okay, where it's like one on top of the other. So it's going to go stack, stack, and stack. This is going to take you several tries because this is uh, a very touchy process and we want to make sure we get it right. So once it's all said and done, your indicator down here on the end, the ball should be turning pretty true on center. So you might dial it up a little bit. So that's actually turning pretty true on center. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and call up this holder right here, which is already called up. We're gonna move it down to the tip of my indicator right here, and we're gonna kind of see how close it is to center. What we'll do, because I got a small hole right here, I'm gonna kind of center it up right there. So let's go into handle mode. I'll go into my X axis, and I'm gonna start handling it down. Once I get pretty close to it, I'll start moving in in my Z axis. So once I get pretty close to it, I don't want to go all the way in the hole just yet. Okay. One thing I want to look at is how my indicator is turning. So the pressure of the holder should be pushing down right there. So it won't look perfect. It's just going to be kind of close. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and come down a little bit more, come in, and then I can see that I'm closer to this edge then I am the edge here at the top and I'll kind of get a little bit closer so y'all can see that. So now that I'm closer on the bottom than I am at the top, I know that I need to move down a little bit further down. So in X axis, I'm going to go ahead and move down some more. Now I've reduced my increment so that it's going to look a little bit better. There we go. I'll give you guys a little bit better view. So now that I'm pretty close, I feel like I can start dialing this in. So what I'll do is I'm gonna move in Z my indicator into the hole. And because I'm using a test indicator, I've got pivot points here and here. So I'm gonna actually push against it. I'll kind of give you a better view until I get some movement with my indicator. So you can see that I actually do have pressure on my indicator. Now, another thing I wanna point out, when I'm indicating this hole, I am only indicating the X axis. So with my indicator right there and my indicator right here at the top and the bottom of my hole, those need to be directly online. So with that being said, let's find out where we're at right now. So you won't be able to see the indicator too well, but I'll kind of sound it out for you guys on where it's at. So right here, I'm looking about, we're gonna put that on 15 and I'm gonna start slowly rotating. And if you'll notice, my indicator is going out and it's just like indicating a hole on any other machine. So I've gone one full rotation around. We're gonna say one full, full, one full rotation around is where I'm at. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back to where I was, okay? And then I'm going to, in the X axis, go the opposite direction that my indicator moves. So if I'm coming around in a counterclockwise motion, when I make my shift, I'm gonna be coming back in the clockwise direction. So let's see if I can make it to where you guys can see it a little bit. So that's going counterclockwise, I wanna go clockwise. I'm gonna go half the distance 
and see where that's at right now. So put it right there on my mark. And then I'm gonna go all the way around. So now I'm on the zero. I'm gonna go all the way around back to my point and I am almost to the zero. I'm actually really close. Okay, so I come back to there. It's actually pretty close. Now, my turret is a little bit off in the Z axis, so you're not gonna be able to see a perfect circle whenever I rotate this. You will see some movement. However, whenever I'm looking at my indicator at that position, I'm on the zero as I rotate it. It leaves the zero, but it comes back to the zero once I get to this other location. So I can see that I am on center in X and that's what we want, okay? So with my position right here, I'm at zero. and my position right here, I'm zero. That means that I am centered on the center of spin on the chuck within however many thousands you get it in, okay? Now if your turret was in, you would see a perfect circle all the way around. That's, that's pretty good. So now that I am in, I need to tell the machine where this location is at. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up to our screen and we're going to come through and see where to put this at. So if I'm on my program, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I come to my offset screen. So I'm going to type in my offsets and you'll see that I come up to my offsets. Make sure that you're in the right one because if you come back up here, you could be in your where or your geometry. Make sure you're in your geometry, okay? The tool that's in the spindle, or that tool we have called up in the turret is tool 11. So I'm going to tool 11 on the X axis. Now, if I look over here under my machine in the X axis, that is negative 15 inches, 214 thousandths from home. So from home to the center of rotation, that's where I'm at. So I'm going to type that in, minus 15.214 input. So now that I have that in there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to insert my drill and I'm actually going to make a hole and then I'm going to measure that hole to see how close I am in. So I'll set you guys back down right here. We're going to take our indicator out. Okay, looks pretty good. So I'm just going to take my indicator off. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up my insert drill. Now I'm using a one inch insert drill and it's very important when you load up this insert drill because if you look at it, one of these inserts is going to be outside insert. So this is going to be my outside insert. You can tell by which way it is. So I'm going to make sure that the outside insert is facing towards the turret. Now what I mean by towards the turret means it's facing towards the middle of my turret right here. So that way, if I was to start coming up in X, I could almost use this as a boring bar. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and put this into my sleeve. I'm going to slide it into my tool holder. Now notice my bolts are underneath here. So that means that I can't tighten down here because it'll be tightening onto the sleeve. So I got to make sure that I'm tightening under here where this opening is at. So I'll rotate this back down, make sure that the flat of my insert or my insert drill is also in line, okay? Very critical things that have to happen. So I'm gonna slide that in there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that down from the bottom. So I'm gonna come back underneath here and go ahead and get this tightening up. Once I get this tight where I want it to be, then I can go ahead and make that hole. Okay, so I've got it tight. Now I'm gonna put a little extra on it. Now I can make sure, give it a good pull on it, make sure it's not gonna go anywhere. You'd rather it turn in your hand right here when nothing's moving than for it to start moving in the part. So what I'm gonna do to see if my part's good is I'm gonna take this two inch material that I have my jaws set up for. I'm gonna go ahead and set that in my machine. So I'll go ahead and set that in there and I'll clamp on it. And what I want to do is I want to come in here and actually make a cut on this hole or make a hole in this part so I can measure it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do just that. 
So I have it moved off center. In fact, I have it moved from where I had it currently indicated. I'm just gonna turn on my spindle. So I'm gonna go to MDI and I'm gonna type in S500 M3 in the block insert. Now the reason why I type in M3 is because it's clockwise rotation. I'll hit cycle start, it is turning. It's gonna look a little bit weird on my camera, but hopefully it's looking good on the video. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into handle. My machine will stop. I will hit turn on my spindle and I will increase the RPMs back to where I currently was. Okay, it's gonna vary on what machine you're on, so that's how I'm doing it on this machine. So in handle, in Z, I'm gonna start coming into my part. Now, once you get close to your part, you need to reduce your increments. So reduce my increments, and I'm gonna come over here, and I'm gonna go ahead and make a, a cut on my part. Now, I don't wanna go all the way through it. I just wanna go into it so I can see what's going on. So there we go, that should be pretty deep. Okay, so that way I can actually get a measurement. So if you look in there, you'll actually see I have a flat. So I'll go ahead and stop my spindle. And I'm just gonna come back out and Z, just get it out of the way. And this is a one inch insert drill. So what I need to do is I need to measure this hole. Now I'm using calipers for quick reference. Okay, so this is actually drilling a little bit under one inch, which is good because you don't want it to be bigger. So it's actually measuring you can see that 970 thousandths so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna raise my tool up 30 thousandths and then I'm gonna make another cut so I'll come up to my edit and I'm gonna raise this up 0 0.030 plus input and now what I'll do kind of give you guys a visual is I've already made my plus input I moved it from the 15 to where it's now currently at, the negative 15 inches, 184 thousandths. But if you look at my machine, I'm still at the 15 inches, 214 thousandths. So what I'm gonna do is in handle, in X axis, I'm gonna come up to where those two numbers actually match. So just like that, I now match. I'm 15 inches, 184 thousandths. I'm gonna turn my spindle back on, make another cut, and then I'm gonna measure it one more time. So I'll set us back in here. Turn on my spindle. Still right where it was at. Come back to the material. And then I'm just gonna make another cut. Now remember how I told you, it's very critical the outside of here is pointing towards the center of the chuck, or the turret, because I made a positive shift which means I'm coming towards the top of the part. So if I go a, a positive shift, my hole's gonna get bigger. So let's go ahead and make that cut. So I'll come in here, go slower, reduce your increments, and notice how it's starting to cut again. Okay, that's pretty good. Come out slow so I get myself a nice cut. All right, increase my increments and let's get out of there. So I'll stop my spindle, and we're just gonna measure it one more time very good so we are exactly at one inch see if you guys can see that a little bit better right at one inch so what we did in this video was we set our indicator up we indicated the inside of our pocket that our drill goes into once we had that in center we came to our work offsets and then once we came into our work offsets we went ahead and drilled a hole in our part and after we drilled a hole in our part, we measured it. Once we measured it, we can see how to get this tool perfectly on center. So indicating this uh, bore is a reference, okay? Now we can get really close with uh, different tooling, different ways, and as we get better with doing this process. So for now, I use this as a reference. I use this to dial it in, just like anything on a machine, you actually have to dial it in on the part. So. Next thing we'll do is we'll set up a boring bar and we'll go ahead and dial that in as well. But for now, this is all I have for indicating in a drill. Hope you enjoyed it. Again, my name is Aaron Rump. Hope you enjoyed it.